Once you start getting comfortable with Genshin Impact's core gameplay, the next major step is to complete the prologue and Mondstadt and get to Adventure Rank 20. This is an important checkpoint because a lot of features are unlocked and today we'll be going over what you can now have access to. We'll also talk about some mid-game progression tips as you work your way through Adventure Ranks 20 to 30 because this is where it starts to get a bit more grindier, but you can also start to farm better gear. The second region of the game, Liwe, is just gigantic, so you still have a lot more to explore. Alright, so first off, at rank 20, this is where you get your first world level increase. World levels are going to dictate the general level of enemies in the game, and this is important because enemies only drop certain materials at certain levels. You will want to increase your world level as fast as possible because you want those better rewards, and plus, I don't think you can progress your adventure rank anyway if you don't. World level increases are a generally good time to level up your characters, weapons, and artifacts if you have been lazy about it. Enemies will start to hit harder, so your gear will need to be sufficiently upgraded. From rank 20 to 24, you're going to be at world level 1, and then at rank 25, you will actually have to do a separate ascension quest to get to world level 2. This quest has you doing a dungeon, and it's quite a long one, so be prepared. It's worth noting that at rank 25, you get more ascension shards for the main character, so that lets them hit ascension level 2, and that is a good gauge for where your main party's levels should be. From 25 to 30, adventure rank farming certainly becomes a grind, so you will want to stay up to date on your daily commissions and spend any of your leftover resin. Every 5 adventure ranks will get you another world level, but the XP grind also increases, so things are going to slow down. Another feature to unlock at rank 20 is the battle pass for Genshin Impact. Every game these days seems to have a battle pass of some kind, and Genshin Impact follows the usual free track and premium paid track system. The main benefits of this battle pass is that it offers character and weapon leveling items, plus mora slash money. The free track pretty much gives you these three things with some single summon wish items. The benefit of the paid track is that you get way more of those three items, and you get bonus chests with leveling materials, plus at level 30, you get to choose one 4 star weapon. You also get some primal gems if you reach the end at level 50. The premium battle pass is $10 US, but there is another version that costs $20, but that one's going to also give you 10 levels head start, and a nameplate card, and 5 fragile resin. So in terms of value, the battle pass doesn't look that exciting because there's no fancy skins or free characters, but as you start progressing through the mid game, you're going to start to notice that it takes a lot more resources to upgrade your characters and whatnot. This battle pass essentially saves you time in terms of farming, so that may be worthwhile to some players. Now to progress the battle pass, you must complete battle pass specific missions. These are daily and weekly missions, with some missions that last the whole battle pass period. The dailies are generally pretty basic stuff with small amounts of battle pass XP. The weeklies are a bit more challenging, but give way more XP. A tip I have is that for these missions that say defeat X elite opponents or do X amount of ley lines, you don't have to actually grab the end reward by using resin. You can simply beat the encounter and not grab the reward, but it's still going to give you credit. That said, there are challenges where you need to spend resin anyway, so yeah. Moving on, rank 20 unlocks the Spiral Abyss activity. To get to the Spiral Abyss, you're going to need to find it first. In the bottom right area of Mondstadt on the coast of Cape Oath, you will find an ominous looking portal in the sky. To get to it, you have to unlock this big wind current, and to do that, you just have to guide these three blue wisps back to their statues. Remember to use Elemental Sight to see the general direction of where they start off, but they are in the nearby area. Once you do this, you're going to fly up the wind current and land in the portal. You will end up on a small island with the Spiral Abyss gate waiting for you. This activity is probably the hardest content in the game, but it offers really good rewards. The basics of the activity is that you need to clear three chambers of enemies to complete one floor. You also need to complete certain objectives while doing this, like defeat all enemies in a certain time limit. Doing these objectives gives you stars, and to unlock the next floor, you need at least 6 stars out of 9 total. The big thing in the Spiral Abyss is that you cannot use items or change gear while clearing a floor. It also has a rotating blessing that you can take advantage of, and each floor has its own types of modifiers like on floor 2, enemies will be frozen for longer, and cryo does more damage. You tackle floors one at a time, so you can tailor your team to each floor. The later Spiral Abyss floors are going to require really leveled up teams, and you will eventually need 2 teams for a floor, that means 8 units total who are ready to go. Luckily, to get your free Zhongling, you just need to beat the third chamber of floor 3, and you don't even need to unlock the next floor, you just need to beat the encounter. When you get Zhongling, you also get a 4 star pull arm prototype for her to use. There are more complications to the Spiral Abyss, but know that all the rewards up to floor 8 can only be gotten one time. After you beat floor 8, another set of levels unlock, and the rewards from those are going to reset twice a month. It's going to be quite a grind to get there, but eventually beating those levels twice a month is the main goal of this activity. 
Okay, so let's now talk about some mid-game progression tips. First off, the map will start to get a bit more crowded. You may need to unlock the map by finding the Archon statues to see these icons for elite monsters slash bosses. These guys drop materials you mainly need for ascending characters. Their element is tied to the element of the character you want to upgrade, so if you need ascension shards for a cryo character, you're going to need to beat up the cryo regis vine. At this point in the game, you also need to start farming domains more. If you hit the domain only slider, this shows you exactly which domains offer what materials. The one that you will probably need first is the weapon ascension materials. The Cecilia Garden in Mondstadt and the Hidden Palace of Leon Shan formula in Liu Wei have different materials so you may need one or the other depending on which weapon you're ascending. The domain also changes what materials it drops each day so keep that in mind. Next let's talk about talent level up materials. So once you hit ascension level 2 for characters, you can start leveling up their talent passives. These domains will be where you get those materials. Last, there are these artifact domains. Artifact sets will start to become much more important as you progress in the game, and it's how you can create different playstyles for your units. There are so many different ones, and these artifact domains have different sets, so check them out on the right hand preview window. Keep in mind that the elite boss monsters also drop artifacts. As you progress your world level and adventure rank, you can start getting more 4 star and eventually 5 star artifacts, which is what you want in the end. Last thing I want to talk about for the map is that there are two very important weekly boss encounters. These are the Devalon slash Storm Terror boss fight and the fight against Boreas, who you can unlock after doing Razor's character quests. You can only get the rewards from these missions one time per week. They cost 60 resin, but they drop really good items including ascension materials, 4 and 5 star artifacts, and the 4 star weapon prototypes. General advice is that you want to do these later in the week if you think you can get to the next world level before then. The higher your world level, the better the drops. Now, I do not know if or where the weekly reset time is stated, but I thought I had read that it resets on Monday, and that is when the weekly battle pass missions reset, so I think that should also apply to these bosses. Now, to end this video, I wanted to talk about Li Wei and some tips for exploring the second region of the game. If you did Zhang Ling's side quest, she takes you into the first area of Li Wei, and you technically are free to explore the whole area beforehand if you really want. The first major thing you want to do is unlock the Geo statue in Dihua Marsh. Mondstadt is tied to the Animal Archon, but Li Wei is tied to the Geo Archon, and because we're the protagonist, our main character will get access to the Geo element. This comes with a brand new set of skills, talents, and constellation tree. The Elemental skill summons a rock formation that does decent damage, but more importantly, you can use this skill to place new playable space in the world. You actually can use it to scale super high cliffs by placing the rock on the side of the mountain, so you can have a place to stand to regain your stamina. Very fun if you don't want to walk around, and Li Wei has some incredibly high mountains to scale. Now if you want to change back to Animal, you have to revisit one of the Animal statues in Mondstadt. You must talk to the statue with the main character to get the prompt to switch back, so don't forget to do that. Now some general adventuring advice for exploring Liwe is that you mainly need the Geo element to solve some puzzles. Likewise in Mondstadt, you probably need Animo more than Geo. For the Geo pillars, you can activate them by simply summoning the rock on the pillar itself. You can hold the elemental skill button to aim your placement. In Liwe, you will find a lot of suspicious looking plates. These light up when you stand on them, but some of them are going to need extra weight. In co-op, you can probably just have two people stand on it, but for single player, you actually can use Amber's bunny bomb as a second person. This will also apply to puzzles where you need to be on two separate plates to unlock something. I don't remember if it works for every single plate out there, but you can also use the main character's boulder to activate a plate. There is a ton of stuff to find in Liwei, and it comes with a new set of Geo Oculi items to find. For some of them, you may need to put down the rock, jump on top of the rock, and then jump again to reach the Oculus. If you have Venti or Kaching, well, then you can also just use their skills to fly upwards. The early game of Genshin Impact doesn't require you to understand all the different features and systems. That's going to change post rank 20 as you run into tougher enemies and it's going to become harder to get those adventure rank levels. Main things to keep doing are your daily commissions and spending your resin. Make sure to do the big bosses for their weekly rewards and try to take a look at all the various domains to see if they have an item you need. As always, you can check the item itself and it should tell you where it comes from directly. You also want to start looking at all the various artifacts for your characters because there are a lot of different ones to choose from. That's all I have for now. Have fun exploring Liwei and I'll see you guys next time.